Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about the prisoner's dilemma, specifically from an economic standpoint. The prisoner's dilemma is defined as a situation where two players have two options where the outcome depends crucially on the choice made by the other. Pretty simple, right? Uh, no? Well, let's look at it how it's commonly explained, using the prisoner's game or situation. So here we have two felons. The one on the left is named Boris and the one on the right is named Dante. And they've both committed a crime of robbing a grocery store. Now the police do not have enough evidence to put them both away for a, a very long time. So they separate them and give them a choice to either snitch or stay silent. If both of them stay silent, they both get one year in prison. If one stays silent and the other snitches on the other, the silent one gets five years while the snitch goes free. If both of them decide to snitch, they both get three years in prison. We illustrate these choices and their consequences using the payoff square, which we see here. So now, Boris has to think to himself whether or not he should snitch. Him and Dante are pretty good friends, but at the end of the day, he can't be sure that Dante himself will not snitch. And he wants to be safe regardless, so he chooses to blame Dante. Now in doing so, Boris has ensured that whether or not Dante snitches, he is in the best position possible. If Dante doesn't snitch, Boris goes free as we can see at the bottom left corner of the payoff square. And if he does snitch, Boris gets less time in prison than if he himself did not snitch as we can see at the bottom right of the payoff square. Now Dante also goes through a similar thought process and realizes that he would be best off if he too snitches. Regardless of what Boris does, he is guaranteed to be better off if he snitches. If Boris stays silent, then snitching ensures that Dante will go free instead of having to spend one year in jail. And if Boris snitches, then snitching means that Dante can ensure that he doesn't have to stay in prison for five years and instead stays for three. So that was a classic example of the prisoner's dilemma, where there are two parties who have a decision to make between two choices. And in this case, the self-interest, or rather the selfishness of the two prisoners, leads to their downfall. Uh, instead of having trust in each other, they both decide to snitch on each other, which leads to them having three years in prison each, which is worse off if, than if they were to have trust in each other, where they would have only had one year each. So the prisoner's dilemma is also a classic representation of Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is when the stakeholders in a situation cannot gain by changing their strategy, even if they were to know what the opponent's choice would be. So let's look at our example again. If Boris was to know that Dante would not snitch, he would still choose to snitch because that way he would get off with no jail time at all versus one year if he were to stay silent. On the other hand, if Dante was to snitch and Boris was to know about it, uh, Boris would still choose to snitch because he can get off with lesser jail time that way, uh, three years instead of the opposed five. Therefore, we do see Nash equilibrium in this situation as regardless of whether the participants were to know about their opponent's strategy, they would still stick to what their strategy was before. So now that we get the basic gist of the prisoner's dilemma, how does that relate to economics? Well, for that, we have to look at a market where competition is present. So why don't we look at uh, the chocolate market? So two of the biggest chocolate bars in the world, there's the Cadbury Dairy Mill, which is right here, and then there's also the Hershey's chocolate bar which is right here. So let's say both of these companies have the option to set the price of their respective chocolate bars at 5 dirham per bar. And at this price, they would both receive a profit of 10 million dirham, which sounds pretty good, right? However, Hershey's realizes that if they were to lower their price to 3 dirham per bar, they would instead be earning a higher profit of 14 million, provided that Cadbury remains at the 5 dirham per, 5 dirham per bar price at which they would now make a profit of only 7 million. But it's also likely that Cadbury would also realize this and therefore they would also lower their price to 3 dirham. Now at this price point, both producers only make a profit of 8 million. This means all in all, they are worse off than where they were when they were both at 5 dirham per chocolate bar. So if we were to create a payoff square of the two chocolate companies, we can see once again that their self-interest into making more profits actually leads to self-harm. In order to increase profits, they both lower their prices, but by doing so, they both decrease their profits. 
Instead, what companies should be doing is collaborating to set prices at a higher price point where they can both earn a high level of profit. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you were able to learn about what the prisoner's dilemma is, uh, how it can be applied to economics, what Nash equilibrium is, and most importantly, never to trust Dante or Boris.